Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Today we are going back to 2002 and opening a hobby box of 2002 Topps Chrome Series 1. Uh, these boxes are really, really tough to find nowadays. I looked on eBay, there wasn't a single one listed on there. So let's check out and see what we can find in this box today. As you know, Throwback Thursday, we always open older stuff. Stuff that you may not have seen on the channel before. Personally, I've never opened 2002 Chrome. I have uh, was not collecting back in 2002, so I'm pretty excited for this. We have a sponsor for the video. It's Scott. Scott, thank you very much. If you'd like to sponsor a video, check out our Patreon page. It's $3 per month. Get you access to all of our breaks. Next live stream coming up, by the way, is the Chasing Trout Mystery Box Monday, where someone's going to get a BGS9 Mike Trout 2011 Tops update. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let's tell you about 2002 Tops Chrome. As we take a look at the box, back in 2002, these were $3 per pack. So you'd probably end up paying around $70 for a hobby box of these back in 2002. I don't know if there's a guarantee of autographs in this or not. I don't see any guarantee. Um, I don't know the exact year they started guaranteeing autos, but nowadays with a Chrome box like this one, you would expect to find two autographs in here. This is kind of a special set for somebody that likes Barry Bonds. As you guys know, I have a big Barry Bonds 87 Tops collection. Uh, this was the year right after Bonds broke the single season home run record with 73 dingers. So there's a special card in here commemorating his 73rd home run. We're going to look for that. Also a couple rookie cards in there. No big rookie names, but lots of veterans and Hall of Famers. So let's go ahead and get started. Have to use this knife today because I left my box cutter over at Heather's house. So I'll have to get that back. I was uh, using it to open up some boxes as we were putting together some March Patreon packs. All right. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> Inside, there's a little um, checklist here, which is pretty cool. You can I don't know if you feel like pausing that and reading through the checklist or not, but there's the first 171, and here's the last of the cards and there's some of the insert cards we'll be looking for 1952 reprint cards will be pretty cool also have a like father like son little mini set and top of the order featuring some leadoff hitters and battery mates so let's see what we can find in 2002 and uh, also let's just hope that these are not going to be sticking together <clears throat> so you'll notice i don't know if you can see this very well but the cards are a little bit bowed this is the problem with any kind of chrome set from you know a few years ago and, and older, uh, the chrome cards definitely bow a lot because of the finish, and that's just normal. So if we get a good card out of here, Scott, I would suggest you top load it up and um, let it flatten itself out. That's all I can tell you. I don't know if you can see the warp warpiness of it or not, but there's all the odds. Um, really tough to see. If you'd want to pause that, you could. But let's go ahead and get ripping and see what we can find. You're going to see the 2002 Topps design. There's an Alan Leverald. I don't remember him whatsoever. Ricky Henderson. Nice one right there. We have a gold Dionis Cesar. This is a top prospect card. It is not numbered. It's just a refractor. And a Roy Oswalt, who had a really nice career. Roy Oswalt, not a Hall of Famer. Did get a couple votes the hall of fame but of course if you don't get five percent you fall right off the ballot there's good old ron coomer leading things off we've got a jimmy rollins former national league most valuable player todd ritchie wants an opening day starter for the pirates believe it or not and stan javier nice speedy type leadoff guy for the mariners so no big hits yet i really want to find the bonds card We've got a Joe Borchard, who I don't remember him at all. He was a prospect, must not have made too much of himself. Homer Bush from the Blue Jays. We've got one of the 52 cards. It's Andy Pafko, 1952 Refractor. Check it out. Very, very nice. Card number one of the set back in 1952. Always carried a lot more value, this Andy Pafko, because it was really tough to find it in good condition as the Pafco usually was put on the top of the stack when kids were putting their sets together back in 52. And uh, for whatever reason, everybody back then thought that it was a good idea to band your cards together with rubber bands. So that card usually took a lot of wear. Tough one to find. Lots of value to that one. All right, here's our next pack. We've got a Jake Gautreaux. Don't remember him at all. Corey Koski, you might remember him from the Twins. Next card up. Sticking a little bit here. It's going to be Mike Stanton, who is an analyst now on MLB Network. 
next pack. Nothing crazy yet. It does say that there are, there's a chance to find a relic in here. They have that noted pretty well. Kenny Baugh, don't remember him at all either. Scott Brocious, there's a, we've got a gold refractor card there of Mike Rivera and Todd Zeal. So if you're thinking about what is the best rookie from 2002 Series 1, it's probably Jason Bay or Freddie Sanchez, just giving it the, uh, a quick look over the list here. We've got an Alex Gonzalez, Earl Snyder top prospect card, and good old LeVon Hernandez, who had a nice long career. LeVon Hernandez, I remember chasing after his rookie card when he first came out back in the late 90s after he defected from Cuba. There's Placido Polanco. We've got a Ramon Hernandez. Next card up is Royce Clayton. And our final card is Aubrey Huff. Let's check out the back of the Aubrey Huff to show you the, the design here. So I don't know if we've ever opened 2002 tops. I'm a little bit afraid to open anything early 2000s for tops because I, I fear the cards are going to stick together pretty badly and um, just be ruined. I, I did do a box of 2001 tops as a Patreon only special, and you guys saw how that one went. It was a disaster. There's a Matt Williams, David Cohn, and Benji Molina, one of the Catching Molina brothers. Of course, his littlest brother, Yadier Molina, would not make the big leagues until a couple years later. His rookie card was 2004 tops. Next pack up, we've got a white border card in here. Looks like it might be another 52. There's Dusty Baker. He's still around and managing the Astros, which is pretty nice. I'm a Dusty Baker fan. Marquise Grissom and... It's going to be Duke Snyder. Nice 52 Duke Snyder card. The back is the original back. Of course, they had to shrink the cards down just a bit. So they were, you know, the standard side size here. And Darren Dreifert is the last one in that pack. All right. There is an Albert Pujols somewhere in here. Albert Pujols second year card. I'm hoping we can find that one. There's the base stealer, Lloyd McClendon. One of his uh, career highlights was him storming off with first base after disagreeing with a call. Johnny Damon in his A's uniform. That's a nice card right there. John Lieber in the pack as well, who once had a 20-win season with the Cubbies. Just one of the many buckos that would leave us and go on to have success elsewhere. And there it is. This is the card I was trying to find. Race to 73. Uh, Barry Bonds, I believe this is card number 125 and one for good measure. So it says, Bonds ends an amazing season by ripping his 73rd and final home run, igniting the Giants to a 2-1 victory over the Dodgers. His 15.3 home runs per 100 at-bats and 863 slugging are also a record. That's pretty crazy. Home run number 73, he saw it on the back. He took it out to right field there. Nice one, Barry Bonds. I wonder who has that card or that ball in their collection. Boof Bonser. Those Barry Bonds home run balls, I think one of them sold for several million dollars to a restaurant owner out in San Francisco. He was going to brand it with a big asterisk, maybe even explode it. I don't, I don't remember what exactly happened to that uh, ball, but lots of controversy surrounding Bonds, of course, because of all the uh, steroid issues with him. There's an Eric Davis. Always looks weird to me in a Giants uniform. Only used to seeing him in that Reds uni, but Eric Davis would go on to play for, you know, have a nice long career. Always liked the way he batted with those low hands. Jay Bell, for some reason, would go on to hit, what, 39 home runs in a season? 38 home runs, despite being a tiny leadoff type hitter. He'd always batted second for the Pirates and bunted all the time. So in 99, at the height of steroid era, Bell pops 38 dingers. Don't ask me how he did it. But I always find that kind of an interesting stat line. I think one of the more egregious stat lines is Brady Anderson's season in, what was that, like 1996, 95-96? Brady Anderson, like a 165-pound leadoff hitter, pops 50 home runs for the Orioles. You knew you, there was something up when you see Brady Anderson hitting 50. We've got Phil Garner, old scrap iron there, manager card. Paul O'Neill, who is one of my favorite Yankees. I was a big Yankee fan during this era. I rooted for them. They were my dad's favorite team. So I, I guess I was, I don't want to say I was on the bandwagon. I liked the Yankees before they got good in 1996. But Paul O'Neill was always one of my favorites. I always liked how intense he was out there. Always looked like uh, he was grinding it out. And we have a Hall of Famer coming up here very soon. There's Sean Casey, a.k.a. the mayor. He's uh, a local guy from Upper St. Clair, Doug Minkiewicz. Nice one right there. And there is the Trevor Hoffman, who's a Hall of Famer. Second all-time in saves to Mariano Rivera. 
There he is signing it. I don't know what stadium that is. If I had to guess, I would say Bush Stadium. Very nice card right there, Trevor Hoffman. Now we need to find the Albert Pujols and um, see what else we can find. Jeff Bagwell, Hall of Famer right there. There's Carlos Fables. Vaguely remember him. Fernando Vina, looking out of the corner's eye, hoping that there's no Albert Bell around. As you know, Albert Bell completely flattened him. Jeff Bagwell, Hall of Famer and seven-time Cy Young Award winner, Roger Clemens, a pretty good pack right there. Clemens not in the Hall of Fame. Getting around 60% of the vote. He only has one year of eligibility left, though. So if he doesn't get in next year, I don't know if he's going to get in because I feel like he might even get less support from the Veterans Committee, from the former players. Mike Cameron had a solid, solid career. Nice, long career. Lots of dingers. Um, I can't remember how many he hit, but it was approaching 300. Very close to 300, I think. Chuck Knobloch, Edgar Renteria. A hero of the 97 World Series. And there's Soup. Jeff Supon, who once played for my beloved Pirates. We've got about, um, what have we got here? About six packs left for Scott. Let's see what else we can find on this episode of Throwback Thursday. Thank you very much for watching in, everybody. I really appreciate that. I hope that you will please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. There's a CC Sabathia, an early Sabathia card. He's got the gold cup on there. Very nice. The gold cup always go to those youngsters. It goes to the rookies that had the best season at each position. So in 2001, Sabathia had the best starting pitcher stat line for rookies. Andy Pathko again. That's two times pulling that card. And Devin White is the last one. Let's see what else we can find in our next pack. Haven't found a relic yet, despite it being advertised on the pack. We've got Chris Reedsma leading things off. There's Shannon Stewart. We'll flip him around. Haven't heard of this guy before. Maybe some of you Angels fans did. Juan Tolentino. I used to like that logo, by the way, the Angels logo. Somebody actually stole my Angels hat in like 1997 or so. Sean Dunstan is the last one right there. <clears throat> I was playing basketball at the YMCA. I took my hat off because I didn't want to get all sweaty and put it on the sidelines. And then when I was done playing basketball, my hat was gone. Somebody swiped my Angels hat, and I was not too happy about that. Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer right there on the front. There's Derek Lee, good old D. Lee. We've got Jason Bay, the Jason Bay in his Expos. This is, if according, if you go by Beckett, which you can't go by Beckett, this is the most valuable card in Series 1. They listed, at, I think, about $8. At least it's the most valuable rookie card. The Barry Bond 73 home run cards valued at $12 in Beckett. I like to refer to Beckett um, for Throwback Thursdays to get a little information about the packs. Otherwise, I'm not going to know how much the uh, you know the suggested retail price was, which back then was, uh, like, what did I say, $3 per pack. Also, it gives me a nice quick look at the checklist. Some of these sets are a little harder to find checklists, too. Not all of them are linked in Cardboard Connection like the ones nowadays. Speaking of Cardboard Connection, that reminds me of the new releases coming out soon. we got 2020 Donruss, which has been delayed a bit. It's not going to come out now until next weekend. Looks like maybe Friday. We'll have to see the storms down in Texas kind of push that off. But the good news is we're going to have some action here coming up. Donruss is going to kick us off, and then we're going to have a whole bunch of releases coming out all together i think right after donruss comes out a few days later i'm pretty sure i'll have to double check this it may have changed over the past week or so since i checked we've got opening day from tops coming we've got heritage coming we've got inception coming and the tops tins coming all right around the same time so it's gonna be pretty crazy lots of stuff to break open so we've uh not been we're gonna have a little bit of a uh you know, a lull in our live streams, but then it's going to really pick up and we'll be live streaming a lot around the middle of this month. I hope you'll join us for all of those. There's Jeremy Burnett's, Carl Erskine, and Mike Bordick. Love the 52 cards. Would love to do a Throwback Thursday at 52 tops one of these days. That would be a really fun video to do. Obviously, I'd have to buy a, you know, a complete set. Probably it's going to be like a, a good. It's going to be called good, which would be like a PSA 2 type set. Even a PSA 2 Mantle 52 tops is probably around 25 grand nowadays. Sean Estes got a Jose Macias and oh, for a second there I saw the Anderson. I thought that was my guy Brady for a second. 
So we're down to our last pack again. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope that you will please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the thumbs up button on the video. Really appreciate that. It helps the videos out. And let's see. We're going to have a Scott Schoenweiss as our last card of the day, but what else is going to be in here? Daryl Ward, who once hit one of the longest dingers at PNC Park on the fly into the Allegheny River. Here's a good one. Ichiro Gold Cup card. You probably know that Ichiro's rookie card is in 2001 tops along with our Pujols, and there he is with the Gold Cup. I was really hoping we'd find Pujols in this box, but we didn't get him. At least we got the Ichiro, the Bonds, and the Bay. There's Al Martin, former Bucket right there, and Scott Schoenweiss is the last card. So that'll do it for this episode of Throwback Thursday. If you do like these videos that we do for Throwback Thursday, opening the old boxes from anywhere between 5 and 40 years old, then check out our playlist. I have all of our Throwback Thursdays linked in the playlist. You can go and find that in the description to this video, and uh, you can watch all types of... Uh, different box openings from the last 40 years as we've been doing this series now for probably almost three years maybe even a little bit longer so i really appreciate your support everybody i hope you guys have had a great thursday i hope you have a great rest of your evening and i will see you all tomorrow good night everybody